Greetings, you all superb peoples. I am Mike Hass, host of the Hascast. We are here to talk about some movies, rap songs, rap albums, and a nostalgia case. Stick around at, for the end on for a nostalgia case on a classic Vietnam War film. Stick around to see what that Vietnam War film I will be talking about. Vietnam War films go hard in the paint. So, I would like to confirm that the series of mixtapes I reviewed in the last one, America's Most Blended by Chewy and Triz, is actually inspired by the MF Doom track off of Mad Villainy. I actually got a retweet by the rapper Twi- Triz, and he um, retweeted my podcast and said, yes, it is inspired by the song America's Most Blended off of Mad Villainy, America's Most Blended. Um, but they changed the wording in the uh, mixtape series, so it's different. So, we got a new movie alert, new movie alert. I know... These movies have been all shut down and bada bat bada boom. Nobody's seeing movies and shit. So Netflix released a new movie called Extraction, starring Chris Hemsworth, uh, the guy who plays Thor. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean it's by Netflix. I've been liking what Netflix has been putting out. Not the package, not a fucking movie about someone's dick being cut off. I do not like that type of Netflix movie. I prefer those actually really good movies like The Platform. Um, that was a great Netflix movie. It really got me thinking about rationing my food and whatnot. 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 Um, you know, it, it was... Man, I'm still thinking about that and all that cannibal crazy shit. And, and then The Platform. I was thinking. I was thinking. Um, yeah, so, platform, I mean, no, extraction, yeah, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth of the Marvel franchise, the Men in Black franchise, now gets to be in his own new action movie, written by the Russo brothers, and one of the Russo brothers, Joe Russo, and, um, you know, the Russo brothers, they made some of the best Marvel movies, you know, freaking Endgame, Infinity War, Civil War, they like war, um, um, the Winter Soldier, which is like top five Marvel, top top two, da. yeah. Um, I'm thoroughly excited to talk about their newest film, Extraction. Now, this film is about a black market mercenary played by Chris Hemsworth, who uh, Tyler Rake is his name, and he's on a mission to extract the son of a drug lord who was kidnapped by a different drug lord because they're at war with each other. So they kidnap each other's sons and must not. Or well, only one son is kidnapped, and it's all set in the overpopulated country of India. And um, he, he is, this film is isn't directed by the Russo brothers. It's directed by the stunt coordinator of most Marvel movies, Sam Hargrave. Um, and he's another one of those. The, he's stopping on the wave of stuntmen tor- tor- turned um directors with David Leach, who uh was a stunt coordinator, and then he ended up directing. Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw, and then um, Chad Stahelski, of who created the John Wick franchise after being a longtime stunt coordinator, and uh, so Sam Hargrave is hopping on that stuntman turned director wave, and uh, phew, he knows what the fuck he's doing. Be real, Sam Hargrave. This stunts in this movie absolutely fantastic, uh, uh, but better than the writing a little bit. Um, but then again, you want to have the stunts if it weren't for the writing. But they're just executed like, and the way the cinematography pulls out, pull like just happens is like, the way the cinematography shows the action, it's not like fucking chopped together, like it's an insanely mess, like it's all like wide, the camera's pointed so you actually know what's going on, it's not like chopped together madness, BS, like it's well like shot and you know what's going on, it's not incomprehensible uh, shaky cam action, it's like, yeah, good cinematography, <laughs> now, extraction, extraction has a lot of extra action, less conversations with the characters until midpoint, through this film, we learn who the character's loyalty is, is to in the midpoint, and for the first act, we do get a sense of who is against who, how badass is Tyler Rake, played by Chris Hemsworth, he's just a great character, Tyler Rake, and, um, and the choreography is, is is stunning, as I said earlier, you know, I'm talking like John Wick good. And the amount of action is John Wick 3 level, like it's a majority of scenes. 
but the scenes without action, the writing's pretty okay. Like the good emotional scenes are it's pretty solid. It's just like that Indian kids act acting was a bit like it was pretty good. I mean, I, what, but what, but then it was, I'm half and half on his acting. It was like a bit too much. It was a bit too much his acting, but uh, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it, and he was a unique character, and I grew to like him. But in the beginning, I was like, oh, okay. Let me see some action. I don't want to see this kid. <laughs> but uh, there, there is like a sense of who who's loyal to who, who's loyal to who, who's loyal to who, and who is loyal to who. And um, wow. By the way, for you Stranger Things fans, there is an interesting character played by David Harbour. The and the suspicions around this character. Whoo! I was like, oh. Oh, what's going to happen here? When I saw David Harper's character, once again, from Stranger Things and the bridge scene and the one shot in the beginning stuck out in terms of scenes. Now I'm talking like towards the end, the bridge action scene. A lot of this is ultra violent, could be a video game. If they made this movie into a video game, I would buy it. Like the, the plot's good enough, it's like just for like a, like a good small video game. And the character could be a fun person to play in it. Like, it's really video game-esque. And, um, like, just the violence is just, violence is just like, pow, 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 boy. Like, so much violence. If you don't like vi if you don't like violent stuff, just get out. Get out. Um, but, yeah. Now, the villain being a drug lord, it's easy for the performance to be some generic BS. And the writing for the drug lord to be some generic bs but i this his character has some spice this villain uh i don't remember his name but he was still really good and the kid soldiers he had you know i like a movie with kid soldiers and i do not know why i'm a messed up person you know i love me like just like 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 the the, the the he's making these kids cut off their fingers and it's just like dang this guy's messed up and intimidating and he does have the troopers with the snipers and bang bang and uh, but, but then again, uh, you realize it's all to save one person, and that's what really tests the loyalty of these characters. And hey, should we all do all this crazy stuff just for one person whose father is a criminal? And you realize, yes, you got to be a good person, and uh, you got to save this kid. You can't stand by and let these horrible people take this kid and probably kill him because they're rival drug gang gangs and stuff. And um. Yeah, it's really it was it was a nice it was good action hero stuff and Chris Hemsworth proves himself to be a very charismatic action hero and I mean action hero I mean action hero who I would like to see again in a movie and if this movie got a sequel, uh yes please, um yeah and uh another fun enjoyable movie that Netflix put out not entirely amazing some of the writing was a bit wooden some of the dialogue was a bit like. Mm. Um, and the dialogue isn't special. The soundtrack hits the right notes, but isn't memorable. The kid's performance is overdone, but overall, the charisma of Chris Hemsworth and the thrilling action story made for a fun time. Another good movie put out by Netflix. I'm going to give this an okay, worthy investment of time. So, honestly, I want to see a sequel because a certain character that fell off a bridge at the end definitely survived, and the main character is a very nice new action hero, Tyler Rake. I want to see more of that character. I want to go into his past a lot m more and maybe see like maybe past missions maybe future missions you know if anything's confirmed about the ending and um if you're listening on any platforms such as spotify or apple podcast please consider reviewing the podcast or give it a quick rating if you have time to do so now that is it for the review of extraction uh by on netflix uh directed by sam hargrave written by joe russo based off of the comic written by joe russo um and other people and um yeah solid movie uh tell me guys what you thought of extraction down in the comment section below now we're going to get into the next topic of the podcast we're going to be doing a track review of the song by jews world righteous before i review this can i just say fuck french montana saying he's better than kendrick lamar your name is you, french montana your name is of one country and one state the only thing i can remember of you is the fact that you say eh, you're a fucking joke kendrick lamar is one of the best in the game and he hasn't dropped shit in three years because he focuses on quality not quantity unlike you you're, you're a joke young thug is going to expose the video of meek mill knocking you out god just god now let's get back to juice world's newest track 
after y'all listen to my rant on fucking French Montana. God. With Exodus and Tentacion's Bad Vibes Forever, the songs released after his death fell unfinished. They just, like, some of them were good, but some of them were just, like, <clears throat> it could have been more polished. Um, with the Exodus songs, it just needed to be polished, and um, they were released after his death because his family wanted to make money off of them. And Righteous is a song released after Juice World's death, and it felt finished. It was a joy to hear Juice's voice again. The flow was good, catchy, and I like to hear Juice, and it makes me sad he died. In order to say the best song uh, of his was like Ring Ring from, off of Death, Death Race for Love. And the, the drugs reference in the song make the song even sadder because he did die from the drugs he is talking about in the song. He says in the song, I know that the truth is hard to digest. Five or six pills in my right hand could even run it over my nightstand. Riveting lyrics. Acoustic beat stands out over all the acoustic beats. Thoroughly memorable. I will listen to that track so much. And it's just sad that he had to die. And, um, yeah, I watched a lot of old freestyles of him. He did that one was like three hours. Not one hour. I don't know. <laughs> but it was, it was great. It was a great old freestyle. And, um, and also check out his high school freestyles, dude. Juice World's high school freestyles are really, really nice. But, um... Yeah, my friend Evan's a big fan of uh, Juice World. Uh, I'm going to be real. He's more of a fan than I am. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, Rip Juice. Um, good good to hear him again. Good to hear him again. He stands out of the crowd in terms of new industry uh, music. And it's sad that he's sad that he's gone. Anyways, sad, 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 whatever. Um, yeah, with the acoustic beat, it kind of was really good. It sounded like two guitars were playing at the same time. There's actually a dynamic beat, and if you listen closely, this song just, like, just makes me enthusiastic to talk about Juice again, and, um, yeah, I'm gonna add, I'm de- so I definitely added to the playlist, probably gonna last a month, but it's not something I'm gonna work out to. It's more of an emotional song, because he's more really emotional. He's an emotional rapper. Yes, sir. Ski. Great song, by the way. Let's get into the next review. We're going to be doing our album review of 38 Baby 2. NBA Young Boy. <sighs> now, when an artist uploads three mixtapes in the last six, my voice just cracked like a little bitch. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So 38 Baby 2. Um, we're gonna be reviewing 38 Baby 2 on the ha- on the on the Hascast. On the Hascast. On the Hascast. Now NBA Young Boy. <laughs> I've always loved the intensity of NBA Young Boy, but he does make uh, just some generic giants, and he's all talking about I came from the streets and now I got money. Blah blah blah. That's every song, and and he does he does this thing. He does this thing, and he does this thing where he never shuts up, and this could be a good. Like he says something, and then he overlaps the next sentence over the end of another sentence. So every sentence you're like da 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 and da 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 da. It's just like, oh my god. And he's fast and stuff, and he does have good flows sometimes. Like, <laughs> like make no sense is one of, is is one of those really good bangers. Um, but it's just like he's uploaded three mixtapes in the last six months. You know, he's focusing on quantity, not quality. But I would say that he's just mostly quantity, not quality. And he, I mean, but he is making more money than me, so good for him. Um, yeah, he is. He's definitely making more money than me. I'm just a little young boy, but. Uh, most of the beats on this album, 38 Baby Part, 38 Baby 2, just generic trap beats. Some of them had a little bit of heart, such as the piano on Diamonds and the um, and the uh, Thug of Spades stuck with me a little bit. The beat on that, and if I were to describe like him, he's just he's really hit or miss sometimes, and um, his songs don't stick with me that much, but. It is nice to hear something new, and um, it was a delight to hear the da Baby feature on uh, Thug of Spades. Um, really like that new da Baby album. It was alright. It was alright. 
maybe five out of ten. Um, yeah, and Ain't Easy had a solid piano riff over the beat, which was a joy to listen to. And the concept of the song was all right. Um, Ain't Easy. Uh, you know, I feel that way. I, I like that one. I like that one. Um, I enjoyed the flow. Good one and a half minute song. Not wasting my time. Um, Rough Rider was a solid song because I felt rough and tough while listening to it. So I felt something while listening to it. But um, I really turn my brain off when I listen to NBA. And when I'm not expecting the biggest musical stuff. I'm just listening for some like chill stuff. And uh, Fire Stars had a spark and stuck with me. The intro track was not that good. I cannot understand what this guy's saying. And <laughs> I don't even know what he says. Something about his grandfather saying penis. I don't know. I really don't know. And I wish Apple had the lyrics so I could understand what he, what he's saying. Um, AI Nash had a good mixed beat with the car and gun sound effects that made sense in relation to what Youngboy was saying. Over the on the rest, top files treat you better were really forgettable and overall, uh, every song stuck with me on this album. But some songs I did add to my playlist. I would say six out of seventeen songs out of this album will go on my playlist. And in the fa- in the past, I've slightly liked NBA Youngboy's tracks. He's made some really memorable songs like Batman, Lil Top. I really like Lil Top. It's that was solid. Um and um, Carter's son off of AI Youngboy Two was was nice. I really like that one. Um, yeah. I am a young boy. He's really nice, but uh, sometimes it's just like, okay, it's it's just like whatever. Um, yeah, he's all right. He's all right. But the the songs I listen to off this album aren't gonna last a month on my playlist. Let me be honest. All right, now we're gonna get to a nostalgic case on a Vietnam War movie. My camera battery's about to die. I'm gonna change it real quick for you. Here we back. <laughs> We're about to do a nostalgic case on an old Vietnam War film. Oh my god. This film's insane. It's directed by one of the greatest directors of all time. And uh let's open the case. Let's open this case. Mother truckers. Ta da ta da ta da Thirty-eight six two millimeters full metal jacket. Now you probably, if you're not familiar with the term full metal jacket, it makes the gun shoot hard, I guess. But anyways. This is a movie. This is a movie directed by Stanley Kubrick. And it's a Vietnam War movie about soldiers that get trained to go to war in the Marines. Then they go to war. And it is about the main character, Private Joker's journey to the thousand yard stare. It's when you've been in the shit in the war too long. And wow, the journey to the thousand yard stare is a journey, is a journey. And I'm constantly debating with myself, is this movie better than Apocalypse Now? Is Apocalypse Now better than this? Is this movie better than Apocalypse Now? Is this movie better than this? I really don't know. I've watched both each time. I'd have to say the color toning on Apocalypse Now is better than this and the aesthetic, but the dialogue and the the characters and the the it are just a, I don't know I don't want to compare shit right now but both of them are really good and both of them are war movies that resonate with me because most war movies don't question anything most war movies are just do what you're told kill the person unhappily ever after you scumbag Vietnam War movies question that. They question why are we fighting? What's the reason? Why? Why? Should we be killing these kids? Should we be killing these villagers? Should we be bombing these places that we don't even know if there's actual people there? Should I just be 
shooting innocent pedestrians off of a helicopter. If you've ever heard the button of, I'll play it right now. While it is a catchy thing that the helicopter guy shooting shit says, get some, get some, and I'll be playing video games with the boys, and I got an LMG, and I'm like, get some. That is dialogue from a scene where somebody on a helicopter transporting the new troopers to a new location, specifically the city of Hue, which this movie specifically shows the Battle of Hue, but this movie isn't about the Battle of Hue, it's about the journey of Private Joker going into the shit in the Thousand Yard Stare. It, this scene where he's like, get some, get some, is about someone that's just killing innocent farmers on a, a helicopter from a helicopter, he's just shooting the farmers and the rice farmers in Vietnam, and, and, and the, the characters are throwing up as he's doing it, and he's like, oh, hey, what's your kill count? And, and yeah, no, no, he tells the, the uh, journalist, um, Joker's a journalist in the war for Stars and Stripes. Oh, my God. The scene with the interviews of the soldiers are just absolutely hilarious. Like, because they're just like, they're saying we're, he said, oh, my God. The interviews, the one guy says, Shouldn't, aren't you doing this for freedom? Aren't you killing all these people for freedom? Shouldn't you be happy? And the other guy says, if I'd kill a bunch of people for one word, that word would be poontang. <laughs> oh, that means sex. <clears throat> comedy, 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 writing comedy. Stanley Kubrick has a dark sense of humor. It's been stated by the actors that have worked with him, and also you can see it in his films, specifically Dr. Strangelove. Which is another great fucking movie and one of the most funny political satires, like yeah, comedy. And uh, you know, I'd say this movie is his most violent and most mainstream. Speci oh, another good fact about Full Metal Jacket. So if you're familiar with the rap group uh, Straight Outta Compton. This movie is about podcast, and this this podcast is about movies and rap. So I'm gonna tie it to rap. So if you're familiar with the rap group Straight Outta Compton, uh, you know Ice Cube, Easy E, MC Ren, Dr. Dre, DJ Yellow, MC Ren, which is an underrated underrated member of the group. I really love his performance on the song Compton in the House. Compton's in the house. Um, and they paved the way for gangster rap. And, but if we wouldn't have had MC Ren in the group, if it weren't for Full Metal Jacket. Because before seeing MC... Before seeing Full Metal Jacket, MC Ren was considering going to the Marines. <laughs> and he saw this and he was like, fuck that. <laughs> nope. 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 I'm not going to the Marines, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he just said nope. He did not want to go to the Marines, and it's, that was, like, when I read that, I was like, that's the impact of film. That's truly the impact of film, and it impacted one of the greatest, well, a person in one of the greatest rap groups ever, so, <laughs> yeah, Full Metal Jacket, um, the suspense, uh, first off, the crazy drill sergeant scenes, rest in peace, R. Lee Army, the Drill sergeant scenes are absolutely hilarious. It, it's just he rips these kids apart. And any drill sergeant that's in a movie that tries to replicate what Arlie Army did and show the reality of being a drill sergeant in the war and just screaming and heckling anybody involved in this, like, training to get to war. <laughs> it's, comedy. it's so funny. And the improv, and you look in, in the interesting behind the scenes of what's going on. God, this shit's hilarious. My favorite uh, insult, he says, Hey, Private, how tall are you? And he says, Five foot nine. And he's like, Five foot nine? I didn't know they stacked shit that high. <laughs> ah, man, this is Full Metal Jacket. Uh, I'd have to say the dialogue's more memorable than the visuals. There's nothing trippy or insane and 
it's just the characters in this stand out, but uh, Apocalypse Now has it more on like a we- Apocalypse Now almost feels mystical. It feels like you're in another world, but with Full Metal Jacket, you feel like it's the sad truth, and that sad truth is hilarious. In some ways, some ways it's hilarious. Some ways it's too dark, and you're just like, God, bro. But uh, yeah, Full Metal Jacket, one of the great war movies. Um, yeah, truly great war movie. Um, you know, Stanley Kubrick. The man. And this also launched the um, career of Vincent D'Onofrio. And he, uh, oh, he played the best, one of the best Marvel villains, um, Kingpin and Daredevil. Woo! Daredevil goes so hard. That show. What? My, my chair creaks too much. Dang. But, anyways, thanks for watching. I can't, I can't even hear my thoughts. My chair creaks so much. That hurts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks for watching Askath. I'll be casting out my thoughts to you on the next Haskast. I got something in my hand. By the way, like, share, subscribe. I really messed up that uh, that. I'll be I'm a bit sick. No, I'm joking. I'll be casting out my thoughts to you on the next task cast. Alright, I'm gonna try that again. I'll be casting out my thoughts to you on the next task cast. <laughs>